Hey, what's up everybody? Cole Regan here, UNC Asheville men's basketball manager. Sorry for the late update on the blog. I've been actually watching my two other favorite teams besides the Bulldogs. I watched Marquette and Wisconsin play each other in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Of course, Marquette pulled out a 10-point win right at the end of the game. But let's get to the UNC Asheville Bulldogs. Let's go to the game here. If you were there, you guys got to witness our second one of the season. Uh, of course, against Montreat College. I'll go ahead and read off the stats here. UNC Asheville had 85 points total. Montreat had 51. Montreat's now 3-8. and eight. The Bulldogs are now 2-6. and six. Uh, For Montreat, I'll just briefly kind of go over their stats. Nobody had more than 9 points in the game. Uh, their leading rebounder was Austin Turner with 6 rebounds. Uh, overall, Montreat just did not have a good enough game to compete with the Bulldogs overall. Uh, let's go to the Bulldogs now. Jeremy Atkinson just continues a fantastic season with 22 points and 7 rebounds. He went 10 for 11 from the charity strike tonight. And just an overall great game out of him. Will Weeks gets his first start as a freshman and he replaces DJ Cunningham who's currently suspended but we'll get to that in a minute. He has a great game, gets 8 points and 6 rebounds, just does a fantastic job in his first start. John Wanunu gets seven, 7 rebounds and 8 points. Keith Hornsby gets 8 points and 5 rebounds. And Trent Meyer just goes out and plays his one, probably one of his best games this season. I mean, I know he had a couple other good games, but this is a good, really good game for him, too. Gets 18 points. All 18 points came from behind the arc. And he went into halftime one for five at the three-point line, comes out and hits five straight threes, and just lights up the crowd. Just a fantastic game out of him. Sam Hughes got a lot of minutes today, and he scored. He made the most of it. He scored 12 points and is even getting a video submitted to ESPN from the give-and-go from Jeremy Atkinson to Sam Hughes himself. Uh, just a fantastic alley dunk that I hope makes the top 10 plays, and I think it could, so be on the watch for that later tonight. Uh, Jaleel Roberts got a lot of time in the day as well. He got seven total points and grabbed six rebounds and went five for seven from the charity strike. And even Zach Davis and Josh Selgson got some great time in today, so real proud of those guys for going out there and getting some minutes and just playing their butts off and it, this just really shows that if you work your butt off in practice you can play in games like this so that's about it for the stats we're going to talk about some bulldog basketball as i said earlier dj cunningham is suspended indefinitely uh... this is dated back a few days ago we weren't allowed to talk about it because it's sort of a private matter i will say that it has nothing to do with the usc upstate game we don't, we don't know when he'll be back. It could be on Monday, and it could be later on. So we'll inform you when he is allowed back. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go into my little uh, soapbox here. Uh, I'm going to talk about Asheville's record and what people have been saying. I, I've been hearing from people saying, you know, Asheville's record is 1-6, which is now 2-6. and six. People are saying, you know, six losses. I mean, you guys are terrible this year. What's going on? And they're hitting the panic button. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, why? Because this team has played Tennessee, Wilmington, um, Providence College, Akron, and NC State and USC Upstate, and those were all losses. Our one loss or one win came from Western Carolina, and then now today Montreat. And my biggest issue is that people keep freaking out, saying Asheville is not what it used to be. And honestly, I think we're right where we should be. Those six losses, they should have been wins, except for one of them. But they were against really good teams. Teams that may end up going to tournament, at least three of them. And in my opinion, those guys are, you know, just really good basketball teams. And we went out and played against them and played them well. Sure, we lost. But 
I would much rather have losses to really good teams than just totally demolish a Division II school or a Division III school and be undefeated or 7-2, and two, whatever. You can praise yourself for being undefeated all you want, but when you guys play lower-ranked teams that you know are just unknown, then come on. I mean, how can you credit yourself with being a really good basketball team? I look at High Point especially. High Point schedule Johnson and Wales University. It's a culinary school in Charlotte, North Carolina. They beat them by 60 points. That's great that you beat them by 60 points, but what does that do for your team? What's that do for you when you go to conference? You're going to end up end up getting smashed because you're going to say, "Oh, well, we we beat Johnson and Wales, and you know we we played them really well." You develop bad habits in those games because you just throw up shots that you think, oh yeah, I'll get those in other games too. No, you won't. And I think by Asheville, historically has always played tougher teams, ranked teams. We've played Ohio State every year that I've been here. We've played NC State for two years now. And we've played a lot of other, you know, really good teams. And honestly, I, I, I gotta say, Playing these really good teams has helped us win our conference every year. You know, you can pad your wins and say, oh yeah, we're undefeated or we're doing really well this year. And then you look at your record and say, oh, well, I mean, we played a Division II school. We played a Division III school today and we killed them. That's great. Proud of you. That, that's fantastic. You know, every game counts. But... You know, what does that do for you when your conference comes around? It doesn't matter what your non-conference victories and losses are. What matters, especially for UNC Asheville, is, is winning your conference. If Asheville wins their conference, then they go to the tournament. No matter if, if we lost every non-conference game, but won every conference game, we still go to the, con uh, we still go to the NCAA tournament. So we look at other teams that you know, say, oh, well, we're going to pat our wins and loss or, or, and get no losses because we're just going to play these good teams or, you know, semi-decent teams. And, you know, what does that do for you? But I'm done focusing on that. I'm just going to say that the Bulldogs are really helping themselves by playing these tough teams. If you're a UNC Asheville Bulldog basketball fan, I'm telling you right now, do not worry. This team will not fail you. We're going to have a good season. Wait for conference to get around. We're going to dominate the conference this year. I promise you, don't worry. Hang in there with us. We're going to do fine. Don't press the panic button yet. So, But I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm going to let you guys go. Just a quick schedule update. We're playing the Norrine on Wednesday, December, December 12th, I believe. And then we go off to play Ohio State in Columbus the following Saturday. And we play in Boston, Massachusetts against Northeastern. Then we go down to play St. John's in New York City. On December 30th, we play Bluefield College here in Asheville. And then we finish out our non-conference schedule playing UNC Charlotte back in Charlotte, North Carolina on January 2nd. So that's about it for tonight. Thank you for watching this first ever video blog. Hopefully we'll have more of these later. And all I can say is, go Bulldogs. Have a good night.